Hey guys, welcome to GBN, the Global Barber Network. This is our first Global Barber Network video. I'm very, very happy to bring you the first video. Um, I'm here with my model, Steve, who's actually um, one of the chiefs behind the technical end of the Global Barber Network, which is really good as well. But uh, we wrangle him in for a haircut because he got sick here to work with. So what I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys is quite simple. Is Something what I've become quite known for is my drop fade and my connection from my lock into my beard. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you through that on my client here today. Uh, so I'm going to begin by, I've already saturated down the hair, so what I'm going to begin by doing is just shaping the hair down to its natural flow, and just off that, I'm going to begin at the back. So I'm going to use my vertical diagonal sections to the back. So quite simply, I'm parting down the hair as it comes from the, the crown, I'm pulling out like a 90 degree angle and just shearing off all that length. That's the weight I'm reducing right there. So what I'm shearing off is just the weight. By using this vertical diagonal section, this will allow me to maintain and retain a lot of the length, but reduce down all that weight. And what I'm doing my last section, my new section, I'm directing it back, or over directing back to my previous. This allows for the hair to flow naturally around the shape of the crown, leaving it slightly longer towards the sides. The reason why we want to sit slightly longer towards the sides or to sit and lay over the corner of the head. As you can see the, the effect it's having. So I've got to keep a lot of the length right there, but you see it's drastically reduced in weight as opposed to the opposite side. You can see the difference already. So I'm going to continue that fashion the whole way around to the back. Now I'm going to completely finish the back before I move on to the sides. So you're probably wondering why is he starting at the top of the hair? And if so, the reason I start at the top of the hair is so that I can create a shape first. Now you wouldn't build a house without putting down a foundation. And for me with Barbara, it's the exact same thing. I wouldn't start cutting hair without putting down a foundation. And my graduation becomes my foundation. So it means that once I start blending from my scissor length into my clipper length, which is my top connection, my side connection, I'll find that it'll be much easier to connect the style and I won't start eating into any excessive lengths that I don't need to. So from this technique of my vertical diagonal sections, you can notice that the hair is beginning to sit and build up more weight around the occipital area. It's important when using this technique not to take it too close to the corner of the head because if I was to take this too close at the corner of the head, that piece here sitting on the corner would kick out and rise up. We don't want that to happen. So next thing I'm going to do is put the hair into a horseshoe section. So now I'm going to put in a horseshoe section. And you can see already, because I have used my vertical diagonal sections to the back, that the hair at the back of the head, resting on the crown, is sitting at ease. There's not too much weight in it, it's sitting there nice and relaxed. So next thing I'm going to do is punch forward the hair, like this. And you see I've created a very small part, just over the radial. I'm going to use that to connect through to the recessionary part of the head, which is right here. Now, I'm using my motive comb, which I find is best for my pattern. Other guys like to use bias park. For me, I like motive. So I'm gonna place my thumb on the back of my, my comb, and my finger, my index finger, is gonna trace towards the recession. And what I'm gonna do is simply put enough force to trace through, like that, and with the edge of my comb, I pull down the hair, and my thumb, I grip the hair, and start parting down. till I get that even, sharp, HD parting. Like so. Punching the hair forward, and again, thumb on the end of the comb, tracing through with pressure from my thumb. And just gripping the hair. The reason we call this a horseshoe section is because if you look at it, it looks like a horseshoe. Okay? Right, next. So I completely finished the, the back. What I'm going to do now is start connecting the back area from the radial through to the recession point. So now I'm going to connect from the crown area straight through to the recession. So by doing that, I'm going to, from the radial part of the head, I'm going to pick up a piece of hair. Now, the type of graduation I'm going to use to connect my hairstyle is for a graduation. Now the idea of forward graduation allows the hair to sit more moving. And for this particular style, which is more textured, 
I'm going to want the hair to sit and push a little bit easier forward, as opposed to using the block format or block graduation, which allows it to sit more square and structured. So with the forward graduation, it allows me to direct the hair slightly forward and give that effect of more movement. So it's important for me while I'm cutting hair to always assume the most practical cutting stance. So my legs are always shoulder width apart and my body's always opened out to the client. So I've done, I've collected my guide off the radial part of the head right here, which you can see. And that's going to act as my guide to follow the whole way through to the recession area of the head. Now the idea and format of four graduation, if I was to use block graduation, I'd be pulling out more square to the head. If I'm looking to use four graduation, I'm pulling out and over directing forward. Once I spot my guide, I'm just going to slide in and trim off the excess. And also while cutting, it's important also not to overstep your second knuckle. I like to cut from the, in between the first two knuckles. This is because it drastically changes your level of grip and tension you can put in the hair. And you can see right now, from the graduation that I've put in, that there's a very shallow silhouette of hair, which is going to be used now as my guide. So again, collecting hair at the radial, picking my guide up, over directing, and repeating the process. It's important not to take it too close to the hair because if I take this too close to the hair or too close to the scalp rather, what will happen is it will push my fade pattern higher up the head rather than keeping it low which is exactly what I'm looking for for this style haircut because I want to keep that lowness, that darkness around the high point and curvature of the head and drop that in around the temples to create that shadowy effect towards the lock. So now once I have created both sides, so I've done my crown, which I've used vertical diagonal sections, and I use my four graduation on both sides of the head. So now if you're looking right down the barrel, you'll see that there's more squareness and more structure to my client's head. You can see evidently there's a difference in squareness. And that's going to be used for a number of different things. The main one is to create a balance and structure to his hair so that he can grow more length out of it, so he can have more length in his hair. Because I don't know when he's going to come in next, it could be three, it could be four weeks. So we want to allow him to have that wiggle room to grow his hair out long, rather than shave up too high in the sides, round the head shape, and what will happen is the length will then start overlapping or hanging over, becoming disconnected in the sides. So I'm going to use X now is something which I find is the very best way to get that even cut across the head and allowing for head shape, be bearing in mind. I'm going to use a profile section. So I'm going to use my profile section. For anyone who doesn't use one, a profile section is essentially a divot of hair which has been cut right down the center of the head which upon done correctly it should leave a slight divot like that in the hair so from dead center of the head I'm going to come across about a finger depth and trace the pattern down again like so so that was that side I'm going to repeat the opposite side of the crown as well so about a finger depth and trace down Now again, I'm maneuvering my client so that I'm always comfortable. Our chair, our environment as a barber is made for us, not so much the client. Yes, it is a comfortable chair to be on, but our environment is meant for us. So I'm always going to manipulate my client so that I'm comfortable and he's comfortable. So I'm going to do first of all, as you can see, I have this middle part. I'm going to pick up on the apex of the head using the finer side of my comb. I'm also going to pick a very fine section from the crown and I'm going to direct that forward because the head is rounded. So if I was to cut to the round shape of my client's head, it'd leave a very even round layer the whole way across the top. But what I'm going to do here is I want more length towards the, the back and I want more length towards the front. So I'm going to cut parallel to the head. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start creating some squareness through the hair. So the squareness doesn't just start from the sides, it also happens through the top. So what I want to do is accentuate the length in the back and create a focal point, not just from the back, but also at the front. So I'm going to work square to the head rather than with round of the head. Okay? So by working square to the head, you'll see already, just by me resting my comb on top of the head on the apex, you'll see there's a deficit here and a deficit here. Now I'm going to play on that to bring that into my style. 
So I'm going to do is collect the hair on the crown, just off my profile section, and I'm going to square it up from the back, allowing the extra travel of length in the hair. So I'm going to use some, a point cutting technique. I'm going to cut about a 45 degree angle to create some shape and texture to the hair to give life to it. This is, allow, this is going to allow me to create that spiky textured effect quite simply. So you can see I'm leaving lots and lots of texture in the hair. But as I work towards the frontal part of the head, I'm angling and pivoting my hand up. Now, this is going to give just the right amount of tension to cut the hair, create the texture, but it's also allowing me to keep the travel of the hair so that it'll elongate the front. The last thing we want when you're cutting and you know, you're going to be texturizing the fringe and the fringe is going to be standing up is to have a shorter fringe than on the back because that's going to show off as soon as we spike the hair up. So as I reach towards the front, you can see I'm ever so slightly just touching the tips of the hair. So if I've done this correctly, we should be looking at a dip or a pit divot in the middle of the hair. So I'm going to pull across a box section across the apex of the head and we're looking for a very slight divot in the middle and boom, there we go. Okay. So angling my fingers up, keep my shoulders square. I'm going to cut across the shape which I've made with my profile section. I'm working my client's head back so it's easy for me to work from so I'm always keeping my posture correct. What you're going to see is that the profile section will be more clear in the center part of the head. But as I work from back to front, you're going to see that it will start fading away, pardon the pun. So you see right here, very evident profile section. But now we're getting onto the curvature of the head. You're going to see that the profile section is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Now this doesn't mean I cut deeper down into the hair. This means that eventually I'm just going to stop cutting altogether, as you see right there. I might just come back in and soften up to add to that texture.